So let's talk about Edward Snowden because he predicts that some government is buying up Bitcoin on the sly as a replacement for monetary gold. Here was the prediction on X that he made this week. Prediction, a national government will be revealed this year to have been buying Bitcoin, the modern replacement for monetary gold, without having disclosed that fact publicly. Now, why is that a hot topic right now? Because Bitcoin is surging up to its all-time high of around $60,000 per Bitcoin after circling the drain for most of the pandemic. It seems to be back. So we're taking bets now on which country it is. It cannot be El Salvador because El Salvador is buying it with full disclosure and has been since 2021 when they announced they would accept it as legal tender. Now, El Salvador President Nayib Bukele has been talking talking about the surge in Bitcoin this week and kind of taking a victory lap. Take a look at this. He says when Bitcoin's market price was low, they wrote literally thousands of articles about our supposed losses. Now that Bitcoin's market price is way up, if we were to sell, we would make over 40 percent, he says. Profit. Of profit. Yeah. And our main source of Bitcoin is now our citizenship program. He says we won't sell, of course. Um, and he says, remember this next time they spill lies about El Salvador. Now, I want to take a second to talk about Bukele because I want to say he would be a media darling if he weren't so conservative. He's young. He's well-spoken. He's really handsome. Right, Clayton? I just okay. want to see if you're listening okay i don't know if he's really handsome i just say that sometimes to see if you're listening i'm paying attention yeah he's a handsome dude okay uh what the he's handsome enough when you think of the guys that they like put up as a media darling i would say he's more than trudeau um if we're okay. talking about yeah okay i'm i'm going on a tangent anyway, what about boris john you want to go down a list a laundry list of he's media not darlings? a media darling boris johnson boris. No. <laughs> uh, no not a media darling the media okay. loves to hate him um handsome media darlings i don't know like macron Okay. Anyway, okay, I'm sorry, I, I derailed that. I just wanted to see what your response was to me calling him handsome. Anyway, look at what the, <laughs> look at what the Associated Press did with his CPAC attendance lately. They're saying he got a rock star welcome at CPAC. Um, when U.S. investor Peter Schiff responded about this Bitcoin t tweet, he says, you know, you better talk about these profits after you sell and realize them. Uh, President Bukele says, just cry harder. So he's not having it. He's a bit, I want to say, kind of Trumpy, right? He he doesn't take, he doesn't suffer fools. He he says what he thinks. He's a little bit rogue, right? I think so. No, yeah. Okay. Um, as an aside, this video went viral this month when he explains how he took El Salvador from the murder capital of the world to one of the safest places in the world because Europeans and Western governments are saying, you can't do it that way. We took the recipes from the European Union. We took the recipes from the United States. None of the recipes worked. More bloodshed, more people were dying. So what do we do? Okay, we do something and we save people. And now we're the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. But suddenly something's bad. Oh, but you shouldn't do that. You should do what I think you should do. Why? If it, not only we have the right to do what we think is right and the, what the Salvadoran people are going to decide whether or not they want this day in, in free elections, but also we've proven it works. And you haven't proven that your system works in our country. Might work in yours, I don't know. But it doesn't work in ours. It's like I told one time um, a member of the European Union, I know you, 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 you Brexited that, but I told a member of the European Union, you take your best government, choose your best government. I, I, know, I don't know what's your best, the best government in Europe, but you choose your best government. Same people, same talent, same experts, same will to do things the right way. You take your best government and you put them to govern Afghanistan and tell them, okay, you govern Afghanistan the same way you govern this European country. You'll be dead in a week because you cannot govern Afghanistan like you govern Europe. So stop trying to, to, to make us use your recipes because they don't work here. You have your, you have your own system. We're not, we don't tell you that you shouldn't have a monarchy. I mean, we're fine with your monarchy. We, we love your monarchy. It's fine. But we don't say, oh, you shouldn't have a monarchy and you shouldn't have hereditary titles. In, uh, why? Because it's your country. You can do whatever you want with it. But suddenly we have to do what you want to do with our country. So, well, he's absolutely right about that. I mean, yeah. if you look at the Arab world, I mean, this is the big grip, you know, where the United States and others want to come in there and tell them how to run their countries. They don't they're not interested in buffalo wild wings. You know, they're not interested in these things that Westerners want. 
They're right. not interested in the movie theaters. They're not interested in the things <laughs> that, that the United States wants or wants to push on other people, right? I mean, you see the push towards alcohol, right? I mean, the World Economic Forum wants Saudi Arabia to start drinking alcohol, right? Saudi Arabia finally, I think, just opened their first uh, like nightclub or something like last week. But it's like, why do you want to push alcohol use into what? Why? Why is that so important? And so these things what don't I, work. What I want to know is how in the world are we going to spread our democracy around the world with attitudes like that, guys? Right. Well, Poor specifically what they they're it. saying is, hey, you cleaned up the gang violence in El Salvador, but you did it in an oppressive way that was oppressive to the gangs. And you didn't really take into account socioeconomic status. And it wasn't a woke way you did that. And he's like, who cares? We're safe. We're safer now. So I'm not going to listen to what you have to say. Uh, we're going to see a lot more of this guy if he stays healthy, if you know what I mean. Uh, here he is at CPAC. I'm going to bring this back around to the Bitcoin bit because not only does he say these things about cleaning up crime, but he says these things about U.S. financial systems and watch him drop these truths. And then let's connect it to whether or not this means that the U.S. may be buying Bitcoin on the sly. When I talk to my conservative friends right here, they always tell me that the problem is high taxes. But they're wrong. Of course, high taxes are extremely high here in the United States. I, I give you that. You're right in that. But th that's not the real problem. The real problem is not the high taxes themselves, but the fact that they are not even really funding the government. Not even those high taxes, higher than a lot of places in the world, not even those taxes are really funding the government. So who's financing the government? Government is financed by treasury bonds, paper. And who buys the treasury bonds? Mostly the Fed. And how does the Fed buy them? By printing money. But what backing does the Fed have for that money being printed? The Treasury bonds themselves. So basically, you finance the government by printing money out of thin air. Someone could ask, someone could ask, well, so if the government can print the limited amounts of money out of thin air, why do they collect taxes? I mean, in theory, it would make sense, right? If they can print unlimited amounts of money, why would they need taxes for? The answer is simple, but it's very shocking. The real problem is that you pay high taxes only to uphold the illusion that you are funding the government, which you are not. It's shocking, but it's true. The government is funded by money printing, paper backed with paper, a bubble that will inevitably burst. The situation is even worse than it seems, because if most Americans and the rest of the world were to become aware of this farce, confidence in your currency would be lost, the dollar would fall, and the Western civilization with it. So that leads me to wonder, because we know that the U.S. dollar has no foundation, whether or not Bitcoin is being bought up by the United States, as Snowden is talking about. And here's how, why. I explained this on Twitter yesterday, or X. I'd like it to pre present it to you now. Did you know that President Eisenhower campaigned with a promise to audit the U.S. gold reserves ounce by ounce? The audit was said to be set, finished just seven days after he was inaugurated, but it took them four months to publish the report, and it was super fishy. According to the government's own press release, it said all Treasury employees participating in the audit were assigned to activities other than those on which they are regularly employed. That's weird. Why would they not have experts counting the gold? And they never told us how much they actually counted, touched, and weighed by some estimates. 
it was as low as 5% of the U.S. stock. Now, experts say that at least 59% of the country's reserves flowed out of Fort Knox in the years since, and we have never been given a straight answer or an accounting. Why is that? And how did we get there? Now, a lot of this comes from this great book, Good as Gold, a fantastic book for a history of how the U.S. citizens were asked to give up their gold, how the United States gave themselves a big raise when they did that, and how then that they sort of pulled the rug out from under the U.S. dollar. I refer you to this. On April 5th, 1933, President Roosevelt, just one month in office, outlawed private ownership of all gold. Uh, most in the hands of private hands was gold coins. Uh, he said the new decree was in effect a confiscation. Those who didn't comply were subject to as much as 10 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. Now, those turning in gold were paid the official price of it, which was $20.66. But as soon as they turned it in, the government raised the price to $35, basically giving the government a raise. They had something that was worth $20, and then they said it's all of a sudden worth $35. Now, Roosevelt apparently picked that price at random one morning at breakfast. It became this secret figure, and for years to come, millions of gold ounces would be spent in an ultimately unsuccessful attempt to maintain it. He says the American people lost something important when they lost their right to convert paper money into gold at the Treasury. They lost their ability to limit the government's power, to manipulate the purchasing power of their money. They also lost the power to re restrain unchecked government spending. And that's where we find ourselves, folks. Isn't it wild to think about how this came down from the presidency and people complied. I feel like today there would be riots if they said you can't own gold. But this was before the Vietnam War. This was when people had more trust in the United States government and they were like, okay, there must be a reason, I guess. Well, I mean, you have to remember the military after World War II, after the victory in Europe, the victory in the Pacific, the military, what the United States government told people to do, you know, when there was like military rolled through your town and they told you to go back in your houses, yeah. you listened to them. You know, there was an incredible reverence for the United States military and of course the that, that, that patriotism around. And so when they told you to do something, you did it and you listened to it. Um, yeah, you're right. And so if they told you we need for national security, for you to turn in your goal, Gold. Oh, you know what? That's my national duty. I got to listen to it. I got to go down there and turn in my gold. And they were exchanged market value. But then how would you feel if then the next month that $20 gold bar was worth 35? Right. Right. They, they robbed you, basically. Yeah. Uh, and well, yeah. And just look ahead. at what they did with silver, where I, I can't remember the guy's name that was that was doing it, that, that had uh, got he was like basically underwater on silver. So the government got involved, started uh, inflating the price of silver to make that guy his money back. And a bunch of people started investing in it. And then they they just dropped the, they just, the government just stopped and a bunch of people lost money on silver. But that was that, wasn't that, that was like part of the, the cause of that silver. The silver yeah, squeeze. That, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, the history of where the rest of that gold went reads like a spy novel. I want to suggest that you read this book because Kennedy also campaigned on getting answers and stopping the outflow of gold. But shortly after he took office, someone pulled him aside and said, shut that rhetoric down right now. And he did. Hmm. So who got to him? Uh, so then again, the relevant question becomes, can the U.S. dollar actually be worth something if the government is furtively investing in Bitcoin? Would that be wrong? Is that why Bitcoin is surging now? Uh, let us know what you think if that was, in fact, what sir, what Snowden was referring to or, or another government. Or is it China? I mean, China, after all, has been secretly buying up as much gold as they can. And uh, this came out. Central banks have been buying up a lot of gold. But China's central bank specifically has been buying up billions of dollars worth of gold. And Russia has been incurring, encouraging all of its citizens to go out and buy gold. Uh, Putin told his citizenry, go buy gold, go buy gold and silver, go buy precious minerals, because this is the future of the BRICS economies right now built on this. So yeah, who's buying Bitcoin? I don't know. Let us know what you think in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.